Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. The Bible declares in the book of Acts, the first chapter, I want to read in your hearing our foundational text for this series found again in the first chapter of Acts, the eighth verse. The Bible says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And again, for this series, I've taken for a subject matter. Don't leave home without it. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for, again, this opportunity, Father, to minister your word to your people. Father, I pray and I ask in the name of Jesus that your word would go forth in clarity. God, I ask that there would not be any distractions in the name of Jesus and that your word as it goes forth, Father, it would fall on good ground. And as it falls on good ground, God, I pray and I ask in the name of Jesus is that you place a hedge around your people, Father, one that the enemy cannot get through, Father, to steal what is being sown in the lives of your people. Help them, God, to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, Father God. Challenge us today, Father God, that we might be more than just hearers, but doers. So I pray that fruit would come forth uh, out of the message, Father God, and that, Lord, it would be a blessing to someone else. It would just continue, Father, to grow and grow and grow that each one hearing would pass on something that would be a, a witness to someone else. Father, help us to understand writer of the text is trying to teach us about being a witness that is teaching us about the power God that you have made available to those that name the name of Jesus to those that are Christians father you have given us the gift the promise of the Holy Spirit so help us to leave this teaching father with a greater understanding father of what it means to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so in order for me to do that, Lord, I need you to lead me by your spirit so that your people would be edified, my Lord, and you would be glorified. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart, God, let it be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and and my Redeemer. I pray and I ask these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. You know, we have learned in this study that Jesus commanded his disciples not to leave Jerusalem until they had received the promise of the Holy Spirit. And if you are just joining us or if you haven't had the opportunity yet, I would encourage you, first of all, to read the book of Acts and then secondly, you know, listen to the videos that you might come to speed to where we are because much has been said about this series. So um, I would just simply encourage you to go back and listen and read the book of Acts for you, you know, yourself in your meditation time. So the disciples had a great work to do. And this work, as we know, was going to impact the world. And you know, as you think about that, that's what the book of Acts is, you know, it's the acts of those apostles, what they did, you know, the beginning of the church and the first Christians. And you know, it's beautiful to read about, you know, the day of Pentecost, when that promise from our heavenly father was fulfilled when you know the holy spirit came as a mighty rushing wind and it rested upon those that were in that upper room because again our lord knew that in order for the disciples to do the work of the lord they needed help you know they needed the power of god and again our foundational text says but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And as I was studying that, you know what that word power means? It means strength. It means power 
and ability. And when you are out being a witness for the Lord, you will encounter things that require the power of God in order for you to overcome them. So I want to close out this series by highlighting a few things that the power of God will enable you to do, you know, while you are out being a witness for the Lord. Simply put, we're just going to keep it real practical and look at a few things in scripture that, you know, the power of God as it relates to witnessing that it will enable you to do. The first point that I want to make is, you know, you you will have the power to be a witness. And isn't that, you know, beautifully stated in our foundational text in Acts 1, 8, he said, you know, they would receive power and that they would be witnesses. But, you know, as I thought about that, I read a little further in the book of Acts and I like the story in chapter four of the book of Acts. It tells the story of Peter and John. You know, they were healing and preaching the gospel. They healed this man that had been, um, you know, had had an ailment for 40 years of his life. And apparently, you know, it was, it had been made known to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the chief captains of the temple of that day. You know, and because his illness was undeniable, it was not something that they could just sweep under the carpet, but they had to face the fact that these men, by the power of God, you know, while they were out witnessing and preaching, you know, they healed this man. Hallelujah. And in chapter four, you know, it also talks about how they were preaching, you know, Jesus. They were preaching the resurrection of our Lord and how over five thousand people were saved and again that got the attention of the captains of the temple and the Sadducees that were greatly disturbed and you want to know a little secret about that you know they were disturbed because they thought that you know once they crucified Jesus that was the end but little did they know it wasn't the end, but it was just the beginning because you know what? Let's go a little deeper with that thing huh? because over 2000 years later, millions of Jesus's disciples are still preaching huh? his death, huh? his burial, huh? his resurrection. Huh? The gospel did not stop huh? with the disciples, but the gospel has spread throughout the land in every land language, every tribe. You know, we have people over in China preaching the gospel, people in Russia, people, hallelujah, in Africa, you know, all the countries overseas. We have people in America preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. The gospel didn't end, but it just began with the disciples. Hallelujah. But going back to the text, these religious Sadducees, you know, they were upset because they couldn't control people. Peter and John, they couldn't control them with their threats, you know, but they laid hands on Peter and John. And so let's read in um, Acts 4 what the power of God did for them and how it helped their witness because, you know, they were facing angry religious men that had the intentions to hurt them. But again, I want to just fast forward a little before we read the text. What the men of God did, you know, in facing the threats and all that they had to endure, you know, to be a witness, they cried out to the Lord, reminding him what had been spoken by David and, you know, telling God about the threats that they faced. And I'll just pick up in their prayer because this was a prayer um, in Acts, uh, the latter part of Acts, uh, the fourth chapter. But I'll pick up the prayer in verse 29. In Acts 4, 29, it says, Now, Lord, look on their threats 
and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, this is verse 31, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God. God with boldness. Now, wait a minute. That excited me because if we go back to Acts 2, the second chapter, we see that that was the day of Pentecost. That was the original feeling of the Holy Spirit when he came as a mighty rushing wind. And I got excited when I read this because, hallelujah, it tells me that God can refill uh, anytime he gets ready. Uh, it says that house shook and they were all filled again you know for a second time and they had strength to go in boldness again and they went in that boldness and they began to preach about our Lord and Savior again the second feeling and so you know what if that's something that God has just been placing on my heart you know God's getting ready to pour it out again hallelujah he's getting ready to pour his spirit out and based upon this text here we can see that it wasn't just a one time thing huh? but God can do it he can do it in a time he just... the second point that I want to make you know about the power of God and we discuss in our text um, the book of Acts the first chapter in the eighth verse where the Bible declares but you shall receive Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We discussed that that word power in the texts, it means strength, ability, and power. And so as it relates to witnessing, um, the second point again is taken from our foundational text. And again, when you are out being a witness for the Lord, it will give you strength. And what is strength? Strength is the quality or state of being strong. And as I thought about that, you know, about God's power and strength helping us to be a witness. I was reminded of a series that I had once did on um, the seven churches in the book of Revelations entitled, How You Living? And the Lord directed my attention to the church of Philadelphia. And the reason that he directed my attention to that church, Philadelphia, is because they absolutely needed God's strength in that time to be a witness. And we can glean from their experience and learn from them and apply it to our lives as well. Because some of the things that they were encountering in that city, you know, they were surrounded by idol worshipers and they were surrounded by apostasy. And you know, the book of Revelation God knew when he began to talk about that church of revelation, he knew in their own strength, they could not accomplish what was needed. Therefore, God opened the door. Let me read to you what the um, scripture that the Lord gave me concerning that in the book of Revelations, the third chapter and the eighth verse, the Bible says, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have a little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. The open door in this text, I have heard many commentators and scholars um, commentate on this, that it is in reference to not only being delivered out of something, but also to evangelism. You know, God opening up a door. And isn't it vitally important that God opens the door to evangelism? Because if you think about it, just like this church in the book of Revelations, the church of Philadelphia, in our own strength, 
we become depleted if we try to do it apart from God, you know, in the flesh. And isn't that what the text says? He said he knew that they had a little strength. And sometimes, you know, when you are out there doing the Lord's work, when you are in service to the Lord, you know, there is so much darkness. There is so much demonic forces that come against you to try to prevent you from doing what God has called you to do. You know, when you take a stand for God, I want you to know that the portals of Hades are going to open and try and come against you. you it's going to release all kind of demonic activity. But I bless God today. Even, you know, the scripture says, behold, I give you the authority to trample over serpents, over demons, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Why in the um, New Testament did Jesus even have to tell his disciples that? Because he knew that, you know, all kind of demonic activity was going to begin to take place when you step out, when you become a witness, when you go out to the devil's territory, you know, and begin to snatch souls, hallelujah, from the kingdom of darkness. And so that's why prayer, you know, bathing um, evangelism in prayer is so important uh, because we are walking in a stronghold, a place, you know, where I uh, testify to you today that I know for a fact that the enemy has sent witches after me. He has sent warlocks after me and the host of Hades, you know, after me. Not that I'm anything special. I'm sure you have encountered demonic forces as well. But one of the things that God has given me and one thing that I pray for every single day and I admonish you to do the same. I pray single day for wisdom and I pray every single day for discernment. It's a, it's a good thing and it, I can say it's a troubling thing because you can begin to discern spirit. And when God lets you into that spiritual realm where you can see, you know, what the spirit of a person is, it becomes, you know, heavy. I can spot, you know, like I said, witches have been sent after me and I know them. I know them when they come, you know, God has given me, you know, the spirit of discernment and he'll give it to you as well. But I can discern that. I can discern, you know, warlocks. I have seen it as God is my witness. So I say that to you today so that you know, we have to allow God to open up the doors. We can't just go in our own strength. We have to know that God has opened up the doors for us to go through. That way, when the host from the devil come against you, hallelujah, nothing can stop you. If you walk through the door that God has opened for you. So again, my second point is God will give you the strength. You know, I never want to close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of 
your sins. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God. Yeah.